Shalom, Israel. <clears throat> So, um, I guess I'll get started. Um, so the Bible tells us that in the latter times, people will turn away their ear. Really, Israel. Israel will turn away their ear from hearing the truth and be turned to fables. Israel don't want to hear sound doctrine. They want to hear things that make them feel good about their sinful lifestyle. They want affirmation for a sinful lifestyle. They want a pat on the back for the much darkness that's in their life. And so when a righteous man of God of Israel stands up and tells Israel to repent, Israel despises that man and they hate him and they reject him and they speak evil against that brother and eventually they put him to death and the Lord allows them to do that because the Bible says precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints okay so this is sound doctrine in other words this you can't prove that this is false doctrine the people that get mad at this are the people that refuse to study it out so that they can understand the truth they're in their feelings and emotions so i'm going to breathe i'm gonna try to be brief i'm gonna run through it run through these scriptures and show you sound doctrine if an israelite woman is not under the headship of a man and I'm going to show you why I say it that way. She's going to the lake of fire. There's no independent sisters getting into the kingdom. None. Genesis 3, verse 16. Unto the woman he said, talking about Jesus, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He's going to rule over you, right? Many of our sisters show that they are truly rebellious to this Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So if a brother, if an Israelite brother, try to get into the kingdom without going through the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel, the brother is going to the lake of fire. Jesus said he's the, he's the door that leads to the, the green pasture, right? He's the gate. He said, but if you try to climb up and get in some other way, you're a thief and a robber and you're going to be destroyed. Because he said, no man can come unto the Father but by me. No man. But many of our people believe when it says man in that context, it's talking about men and women. But it's not. It said no man can get to the Father except through Christ. No woman can get to Christ nor the Father except through man. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. 
and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Cut and dry like I don't know what. Let's go to, let's go to Numbers chapter 30. Numbers chapter 30. Numbers 30. Numbers 30 and verse 3. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond being in her father's house in her youth. This is a daughter of Israel in her father's house in her youth as a virgin daughter of Israel, which many of our people do not raise their daughters to remain virgins. They teach them to be whores and they teach their sons. Many of our people te we teach our sons to be whoremongers. But you'll get mad at me for telling you the truth. Let's skip down. Verse 6. And if she had at all an husband, when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips wherewith she bound her soul of none effect and the Lord shall forgive her. So why didn't the Lord say if she's living in her house by herself as an independent black woman? How come he didn't say that? He gave you two examples that are acceptable unto him, which is the daughters of Israel either being their father house or being their husband house. Well, Brother Paul, what if she, what if her father's dead and her husband's dead and she's a widow? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy 5. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. That means with a righteous mindset. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, children or nephews sons or nephews watch this let them learn first to show piety at home that means to uh, uh, take responsibility in the house and to requite their parents that means you pay back you know how many of you israelites you believe that if you do one act of kindness for your mother or your father uh, and, and let's say your mother or your father is wicked. Let's say they're not dealing with the Bible. You feel like if you do one act of kindness that that sustains you for the rest of your days and their days. But Jesus told you to honor your mother and your father that your days be long. That means when your when your folks get elderly and they get sick and they need someone to assist them around. You're not supposed to put them in a nursing home. You're supposed to take up responsibility and repay your parents. Oh, I know you don't want to hear that. I know. I know because it cuts deep to the soul. But this is about holiness, which if you don't have holiness, you can't see God. The Lord said that is good and acceptable before him. Verse five. Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate. We talk about sisters in Christ. We talk about. Uh, righteous elder women who are widows. We're not talking about these sinful Israelite sisters out in the streets that don't that can't nobody tell them nothing. We're talking about sisters that's in the word, elder women that's in the word. She that's a widow indeed and desolate, trusteth in God, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. 
a lot of times you find that amongst the sisters of Israel. But it happens with some elder women, I'm sure, too. Because they, they get to running around calling themselves cougars and milfs. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, now we jumping back to the son or the nephew. Let's say this, this Hebrew sister, is she, let's say she believe in the word. Let's say she don't. Let's say she becomes a widow. Her son is supposed to take up responsibility for his mother. If the son is not in the picture, then the nephew or a male cousin or an uncle or a granddaddy. You understand? And if none of those are in the picture, then the righteous brothers that's in the church house. If any provide not for his own, for your own people, and especially for those of his own house, what if it's your aunt? What if it's your, uh, your, um, your great aunt? What if it's your grandmother? What if it's your mother? What if it's your sister? If you don't provide, especially for those of your own house, the Lord says you have denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. This is not about extortion. This is not about the black woman putting the black man on child support to get money out of him. If he wasn't paying to, if he wasn't taking care of his responsibility while y'all were together, then what you're doing by extorting him for money, that's because you're full of bitterness. And you need to learn to forgive, my sister. How you gonna force the man to pay you and he wasn't taking care of his responsibility while y'all were together? You need to say la that moment. Say la that. But the Lord said that if, if the brother who got a widow in his family, if you don't take care of her, meaning she needs to come under your hedge of protection, your headship, the Lord said you deny the faith if you ain't even going to take care of this widow woman who's in your blood family. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, meaning if she not at least 60 years old, you might want to be careful. Trying to really take care of her and be there for her, support her. You might want to be careful if she not at least 60 years old. Plus, there's other requirements which we're going to read about. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been the wife of one man. Well, there's room for grace, right? There's room for compassion and mercy, because what if she didn't come into the word until she was about like 45, 50 years old, right? Well, then all that past stuff, let's say she had multiple husbands. OK, that can be forgiven by the blood of Jesus. So don't get stuck there. Don't get caught on that. Well, what if she had more than one husband? Look, just slow down. Having been the wife of one man, Shalom Stephen, well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, which a lot of these Hebrew women is not doing this today. They not doing this today. In fact, when they husbands say, I want this brother to stay at my house tonight and until he take his journey wherever he going, most of the time the brother's wife be like, no, I don't want to do that. No. Like she usurping his authority. Like the man don't have no say so. It says if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints feet. Shalom, shalom. If she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. We in 1 Timothy 5, and I'm showing uh, the example of how to take care of a widow, widow women amongst Israel. Because no matter the circumstance of the Israelite woman, she must be under the headship of a man in order for her to be ultimately saved. It's cut and dry. This is sound doctrine. So it says, we're in 1 first, first Timothy 5 and 11, but to the younger widows, but, but the younger widows refuse. These young Israelite women, they got children. They don't probably, maybe they don't have children. Husband died. 
whatever he may be in life doing life in jail whatever right the younger widows refuse you know why for when they have begun to wax wanton against christ they will marry so you're not refusing them because you just don't want to take care of them brothers but you refuse the younger widows amongst israel because they don't want to listen oftentimes like 95 percent of the time they're not trying to hear nothing that you're saying nothing you be trying to tell them what the books say and they so rebellious they like it can't no nigga tell me nothing right judge for yourself israel it says it says but the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax wanton against christ they will marry they literally these sisters be giving jesus a timetable like jesus and they mind they don't say it outwardly and they mind, they be saying to themselves, Jesus, I'm going to give you six months to give me a husband. And if I don't get a husband in six months, then I'm not going to deal with your Bible like that. I'm not going to deal with this word like that. These sisters be in these church houses looking for a husband, but not willing to pick up their cross and learn to deny their fleshly ways. They put a head wrap on, they put some fringes on sometimes, and... They can quote a few camp doctrines and they think that that makes them ready for a husband and it does not. Because they still got that harlotry in they in their heart. I'm going to show you, Brother Steve, I'm going to show you. So he said, refuse the younger widows because they're going to wax one. They're going to get tired of waiting on Christ and they're going to they're going to fornicate. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal, they learn to be idle. Judge for yourselves, man. Judge it for yourself and see if this is true or not. Wandering about from house to house and not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry. What do you mean? Wait, so, so, so if the, if the young Hebrew sister... Let's say the first baby daddy didn't work out, right? She got children. We know some sisters like this. She got little children, right? No husband, no head. She trying to make the pastor her head, but the pastor's married, right? Uh, she trying to make Christ her head, but Christ never said that that was the case. Christ never said that he's the head of the woman. Christ said he's the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. That's what he said. That's what's written. You can't argue this. So then Paul says, I want, look, the younger women, they need to get married. These sisters that got little children, they need to get married. But before they get married, they need to get born again by the word of God. Get their mind right. Learn to be quiet. Stop arguing. Stop trying to usurp the authority of a man. You keep trying to tell, you keep trying to rebuke the man. That's not your place. And then when a real man tell you that's not your place, now you're catching feelings. So it says, I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. We're going to come right back to this. Hold your marker, 1 Timothy 5. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. Let's see who the woman's adversary is that Paul was talking about. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now watch this. When you go, let's go back to 1 Timothy 5. When you go to Genesis chapter 3, who is the woman's adversary? God looked, told you the whole thing from the beginning. Didn't he say I call the end from the beginning? He told us. He showed us the whole thing in Genesis. The woman, Satan got a hotline speed dial connection to the black woman, to Israel. He calling our sisters up 24-7, putting thoughts in their mind. Girl, you don't need to submit to him. Girl, you don't need no man to get salvation. Bump what God said. And she like, yeah, you right. Because this Negro, he be saying this and this, and he be doing that and blah, blah, blah. But what does the book say? Well, brother, well, what if her husband's not in the word? What if he's a wicked man and he's trying to lead her into sin? What's, what's she supposed to do? 
We're not going to read the chapter, but you read it on your own time. First Samuel 25. First Samuel 25. Let me double check real quick. First Samuel 25. You read that on your own time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First Samuel 25. Read that on your own time, right? That's your example. That's one example. Here's the second witness. Go to First Peter. I mean, Second Peter. Is it Second Peter? No, First Peter. I was right. Go to First Peter three. First Peter three. This is how, sisters, if you got a if you got a wicked husband, this is how you're supposed to conduct yourself. Stop tripping off the fact that he's wicked. This is what you're supposed to do. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, to your own husbands, not the pastor. It didn't say be in subjection to Christ. You being, you being in subjection to Christ is through your, your submission to your husband. That's how you are submitted to Christ, my sister. You submit to the man and the man gives an account for you to Messiah the same way the man submits to Christ and Christ gives an account to the father for the man. How are you not understanding this? Simplicity in Christ. But if you're full of pride, then you're blinded and you cannot see the light. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, that means your pure, wholesome, virtuous, minimal words, no arguing, no debating, no strife. Why they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, your born again conversation in Christ. When your wicked husband see how beautiful and, and transparent and honest and uh, spirit filled and, and doing the works of the Bible. When, you're, when your wicked husband see that, it's either going to cause him to get away from you or he going to turn and repent. But most of our sisters, brothers, they not doing this. They not doing this because they trying to force their husband to change. That's not your place to, to, to deal with that, sister. You supposed to do this. This is how if you want to see him change, this is what you supposed to do. Learn to be quiet. I'm talking to my Hebrew sisters. Learn to be quiet. Why they be chase, why they behold your chase conversation coupled with fear, right? Who's adorned and let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, which is submissive. Meek means to submit. It means submissive. Meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. You know why it's in the sight of God a great price? Because when God saw what Eve did, God was very displeased. Very displeased. Why are you sitting there talking to the serpent? Why are you talking to Satan? I told you not to talk to him. And you're going to open your mouth wide and having conversation with this, this creature. The Lord is teaching our sisters humility through being quiet and submitting. Because Eve was lifted with pride in the beginning. Pride. She getting to talking to the serpent when she should have looked to her husband and said, and not said nothing, but just gave him the eye like you handle this. <sighs> so far as widows, right? I'm going to come back to the virgin and the wife. Far as widows, widow women amongst Israel. Apostle Paul said, don't, don't really try to be there and help uh, Israelite widow unless she at least like 60 years old. And even if she's not 60 years old, if she's humble enough to submit to the word and come into order, help that sister, help that elder, uh, that elder woman, that mother of Israel. Let me show you something why I say that two or three witnesses, Israel, two or three witnesses, every truth is established. If you don't believe it after the, the two or three witnesses, that's on you. That's not on me. Let me show you something. Go to John 19. 
John chapter 19. Go to John chapter 19 and verse 25. John 19 and verse 25. I want to show you something that most of y'all have no clue about. But you sitting there and you deleting and blocking me and catching an attitude because I'm telling you the truth. These sisters is getting pissed with me because I, I'm telling the truth. 25 says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, his mother. I'm going to show you, Stephen. I'm going to show you. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. Right. When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother. Now, that disciple that he loved was uh, uh, Lazarus. Now watch how Jesus transfers authoritative power from himself to Lazarus on behalf of his mother or for his mother, who was a widow at this time, because you don't read nowhere right here where it says Joseph and Mary were still married. Joseph must have died before Jesus went to the cross. So it says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home. So what does that mean? We just read it in 1 Timothy 5. We just read it. So if you don't get it, then go back and read it. And if you don't understand after that, that's on you. Now, that's with the widows, right? Now, let's let's look at something. Let's go to first first Corinthians chapter seven. Let me show you something. Because you asking, Brother Stephen, you said. How does that prove that if a woman is not under a man, she's going to go to the lake of fire? What you have to start with, my brother Stephen, is you have to start with if a man does not submit to Christ. He, where's he going to go? Can he get into the kingdom without Christ? So that's your answer in this whole thing. It's really very simple. It's just you keep, it's not just you, but people just keep trying to focus on defending the black woman. And I'm not preaching hate against our sisters, but I'm telling you the truth. If they don't submit to, if they don't come in, into the order of God, they're going to go to the lake of fire. It's not saying that the, the sound doctrine is not that they must have a husband in order to be saved. That's not what the teaching is. The teaching is they must come under the order of, of submitting to a man. And God got all bases covered. God got all bases covered. Jihad, I never said that a woman's husband is Christ. I never said that. I said that a woman cannot say Christ is her head because she can't. The man is the head of the woman. That's what's written. So if you're arguing against that, then you you arguing against the father. First Corinthians seven. Look at this. First Corinthians seven. Let's start at verse. Uh, where is that? Let's start at verse twenty five. Actually, actually, let's skip down even further. Let's start at verse. Uh, Verse 36, verse 36, Jihad, that's not what the Bible say. So you need to repent. That's not what the Bible say. The Bible does not say the head of the woman is Christ. It does not say that. Nowhere, nowhere. First Corinthians 7, 36. But if any man, now this is talking to, to those of us who are fathers in Israel who have virgin daughters. This, these couple verses I'm about to read to you, this is about us who have virgin daughters within Israel. Watch this. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, right? If she passed the flower of her age, pay attention, my brothers, pay attention. It, let me start from the top. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, 
If she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Now, let me show you what this is talking about, what Paul is talking about. Those of you who have virgin daughters amongst Israel, right? When your daughter gets to a certain age, she's going to start having experiences, right? Hormones and all that type of stuff, right? Every daughter of Israel don't desire to be uh, um, a wife, right? Some, some sisters are content with being by themselves. Well, I tell you the truth. If they are content, if your daughter is content on being by herself and she's not pressed to be married, then she must stay in your house, you being her father. She must stay in your house and remain a virgin. Do you understand? She must remain a virgin. You're not supposed to let her go free roam and be fornicating. You understand? She's supposed to stay in your house under your authority as her father and stay a virgin. But watch this. He said if she passed the flower of her age, meaning puberty, she's past that, right? And need so require. What does that mean? That means if she desires to get married and you judging that and you see she, she's starting to fill herself, you know, she, you know, she may be ready for marriage. Then if a young man approaches her, you understand, approaches you for her hand in marriage, then the brother's supposed to pay the dowry according to the virgins and he can take her to be his wife. This is the law. This is the law. You understand? When we go back home, Israel and Judah, we're going to enforce this throughout the entire creation. So you need to understand this now and stop playing games. Our daughters, we, we, we're, we are committing whoredom. We letting our daughters grow up and become whores, man. We, we raising our sons to be hell raisers and whoremongers. Instead of following what the Lord say and doing it righteously. The, so, so Paul said, and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. So if, if, you're, if you're judging, your, if you see your daughter, you know, she, she seemed to be ready at that time, whatever age, you know, not whatever age, but, you know, it's about 18, 19. And she ready to, you know, she's you've matured her in the word as her father, as her first uh, um, for her first hedge. You've, you and your wife have matured her in the, in the word. She's a virtuous uh, daughter of Zion. She know the word. She know how to do what the words say, right? She knows how not to argue with a man of God, right? Or any man. She know how to be quiet. She's submissive. She's not a fool. And she desires to be married. Then you you allow that. You you So think about this. Think about how, how, how simple this is to understand. When, a, when even in the sinful world, Israel, when, when, a, when a daughter of Israel is about to get married and she's walking down the aisle, who's walking her down the aisle? And then he gets to the altar and he releases authority to the man that, that is about to become her husband. That's with the sinful world. Now, how much more you say that you in the book, how much more should you understand this? According to what's written. So it says, nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, so if you ju if you see your daughter that she, you know, she, she don't need to be married. She, she's not pressed for it. I don't see no tendencies in her. She don't need my daughter's not getting married. She's OK being content by herself. That still don't mean she can go out of your house and live like Beyonce's song, independent. She can't do that because that's against the law. So it says, nevertheless, he that standeth talking to us, fathers of Israel who have virgin daughters, nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but have power over his own will. You understand? So you have made your mind up and have so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. So watch this. Let's go to Exodus 22. Exodus 22. Please, Israel, please do me a favor. Please do Brother Paul a favor. The Lord said, hear the whole matter first, right? And then you speak. So please don't keep trying to tell me that I'm wrong about what I said until you hear the whole thing out first. Because it's a shame and it's folly to you to keep telling me that I'm wrong and you're not listening. 
Okay? So, <laughs> you said I'm mishandling the word. Again, take time out and listen before you speak. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid, a maid is a virgin daughter of Israel. Okay? It says if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, she's not promised to another young man, she's not engaged, okay? And lie with her, meaning he take her virginity, right? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. But guess what? Guess what? This daughter of Israel was in another man's house. So that man, that, that man's house she was in, that man got sole authority over her. Do you understand? Watch this. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father, so this is where the virgin daughters of Israel is supposed to be at. They're not supposed to be in the streets fornicating, becoming a whore. They're supposed to be in their father's house. Do you understand? Well, what if their father's alive, brother Paul? I mean, what if he's dead? A uncle can step in, a brother. Y'all ever seen that movie Fast and Furious? Now, these are sinners. Oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm about to blow up on you. These are sinners. These are sinners, right? In the movie Fast and Furious. But guess what? Dominic Toretto and his sister Mia, didn't Dom have authority over his sister because the father wasn't around? Do you see how simple this is to understand? Do you see? Now, when the woman don't have a man in authority over her because she want to be independent, look at her life. She's literally destroyed. She got different colors in her hair. She wearing tutus and skirts. I mean, the tights. Come on. She's destroyed. It says, if her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. So guess what? That means if you got a virgin daughter, she get of age and she passed, she passed the flower of her age, right? And her and this, this young Hebrew boy, they whatever, right? They fornicate because he didn't do it properly because he maybe he wasn't raised like that. He didn't know. No excuse. He come and defile your daughter. You still as her father, as her authority, because she's in your house, you still have all authority to say no. And you're going to pay me for what you did to my daughter. But some of y'all don't want to see this. You don't want to understand it. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 20. Let me see what chapter that is. 22, is it? Deuteronomy 22. Yes, Deuteronomy 22 in verse 28. Verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, which back in those days was approximately a hundred thousand dollars. Did this Negro really just say a hundred thousand dollars? Where are you getting that from? Study it out for yourself. Study it out. I'm not going to give you all the answers. Because then that's how Israel becomes lazy spiritually. Because some man want to give you all the answers. No, you need to go do your homework. Go study. So this is why these brothers was working, willing to work years to get their wife. To pay off the dowry for the virgin. But child Negroes don't want to understand this. It says, and, and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father. Why he got to pay the father? If she was an independent woman living on her own, why she why the man got to pay her father? Because she was in her father's house. Under his headship. She got to pay. I mean, he got to pay 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he have humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. But in Exodus 22, we saw the Lord say the other side to it. The brother could do that. Right. To, he could defile this, this daughter of Israel, this virgin, and the father whose house that this girl was staying in, she, the father can still say, nah, you're not marrying him, and you're going to pay me for defiling my daughter. Now, are we doing this in America? Nah, because we've been westernized. We think this is strange. This is strange. 
this is the law of our God, man. This is the law. This is the same laws that our forefathers was keeping, the ones that was righteous. So when Paul said, if any man thinks he behaves himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do what he will. He said, if not, let him marry. If your daughter, if she, if you, if she grew up the right way, you know, be, being in your house, man of God, and she, and she, you know, at that age where she ready to get married, brother, send your daughter off and let her get married. If that's, if she's, if she's willing, but make sure before she leave your house, she stay a virgin. Don't let her grow up and become a whore. Please don't. And don't raise your sons to be hell raisers and whoremongerers. Because some of us grew up that way, man. And it's hard for us to even let go of those wicked ways even to this very day. So think about your seed, man. So now, let me show you. Because... Brother Steve, this is probably not enough for you to understand if a woman is not submitted to a man, a man didn't say she had to have a husband. You understand? We just looked at two examples. She could be a virgin, stay in her father's house. If the father died, then the authority transfers to another relative in her family. Nephew, male nephew. Uh, uh, well, I didn't have to say male, but nephew, male cousin, uh, uncle, granddaddy. You understand? Um, uh, um, Son, right? And if, if she got no males in her family, right? Then the, the authority transfers to the righteous brothers in the body of Christ. They become her head. You understand? And then if she don't want to be married, she still got to minister to those men of God. Let me show you. Go to, I want to say it's, let me see. Let me see, let me see. Um, where is that? Because it talks about uh, the women coming and ministering. ministering to Christ and the disciples. <laughs> Jihad, you funny. I thank you for, for saying those things about me, though, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be persecuted, man. That let me know I'm in, I'm doing this thing right. I'm glad. I'm real glad. Um, okay. I want to share this example with you of a woman who may not have had a husband, but she was in the church house ministering to the men of God. This is Matthew 26 and verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Right? I ain't going to read it further. You can read it on your own time. But she's ministering to the, to the man of God. Not just Messiah, but she ministered. These other women, there's scriptures to prove it. These sisters ministered to the men of God, to the disciples. So even if she don't want to be married, that's fine. But she still got to come under the order and the headship of a man. It don't mean she got to hit the streets and find a thug and say, I got to submit to you because if I don't have a man, then I can't, you know. I'm not saying that. Let's use wisdom and common sense, people. Matthew 27. And let me see if this. Yeah. Matthew 27 and 55. Right. Right. Matthew 27, 55. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. If you don't see it, it's because you don't want to see it. Let's go to Isaiah 4, 1. Isaiah 4 and 1.
Now, this is taught. Now, people will have argued this for a long time and said this is not talking about the millennium, but it is. Isaiah 4 and 1 is talking about the millennium period. OK, now watch this. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only watch this. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. What does that mean? That means these was independent sisters before Messiah came. And now that Messiah has come and restored righteous order to this world, these sisters understand now and they find one man. Now, the reason it's one brother is because the men going to be rare in that day. The flesh and blood men that's left, they're going to be rare. You understand? Until the, 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 uh, the flesh people start repopulating the earth. Now, these seven sisters going to say this one brother and notice the Lord didn't say nowhere in here. The Lord didn't say the brother going to agree. It just said that these women going to come to this brother and say, take away our reproach. What does that mean? Our disappointment. What's the disappointment? Well, we, we need to We need to be submitted to a man now. Now we understand what this thing is about. Let me go deeper. Let me go deeper for you, brothers. Go to. Go to. Go to Jeremiah 3 real quick. Jeremiah 3. And verse. 8. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, adultery, adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. That's why we're not in the land. That's why we're not known as Israelites today. We're known by Gentiles, Negroes, niggas. All that, right? The Lord said, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. That's why in the year 70 AD, we got divorced from God too. God divorced us, kicked us out of the land, right? Now, Jesus, even though we scattered, Jesus through his blood has offered forgiveness unto all 12 tribes. Whosoever will let him come freely. And drink of the water of life. Be born again. Believe in Messiah. Keep the commandments. Endure all things. You can be saved at the end. Now question, 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 question. Jesus is not physically here with his wife right now. Right? And we're not married even though he's back in, uh, in the third heaven. We're not married right now. We are divorced, Israel. We are a divorced woman. So guess what? Even though the divorced woman... Is divorced she don't have a husband guess what headship she still got to come under a man it can be next of kin think about it could, let me just finish this it could be next of kin or it can be the righteous men of God in the body of Christ now think about Naomi in the book of Ruth Naomi remember Naomi and remember Ruth right okay Naomi her and her husband and their two sons, they go to Moab because it's a famine in the land because Judah wasn't listening. Israel and Judah wasn't listening, right? The 12 tribes. There's a famine in the land. They go to Moab. Naomi's husband dies. Ruth's husband dies. The other young lady, her husband dies, right? Naomi's like, I'm going back home because I heard God is blessing my people. Now, I'm going to go back home. Ruth, you and, your, and this other Moabite, y'all stay here telling her daughters-in-law. Y'all stay here. Ruth's like, no, nah, I want to come with you. I want to come with you. It's like, all right, come on. So they go back to the land. Now ask yourself, why was Naomi pressed to go back to the land? Think about it. Naomi was righteous. Now the Bible don't testify that outright, but surely she has some common sense. She, she must have been righteous, okay? If I had to guess. I, I, I shouldn't say that she was, but I'm just saying I guess. She goes back home because she probably understood this, that she needed to be under the men of God for protection, and guess what happened in the process? She got blessed with a son from her dead son, Ruth's husband, by Boaz marrying Ruth, which leads into another topic. But Ruth even got a husband. She got another head. So look at how the Lord does things like that. Now, back to my main point. Israel, we are, we are divorced from our God. He divorced us, right? We're not in his house right now. So guess what? He promised that we're going to get remarried. But guess who is the man 
who we are ministering to, submitted to right now on behalf of our future husband. Let me show you. Go to John chapter 16. The Lord be praised, man. I enjoy going over the word like this. And, and I, I'm doing this video for the brother Stephen. Doing this for the brother Stephen. Because like I said, brother, I got hope for you, man. I really don't. I hope that you're not like these other Israelites that's just wicked in the mind and don't want to hear the truth, man. I got hope for you, brother. Don't follow in their footsteps, man. Be humble and listen to the word. It ain't about me. Listen to the word. John 16, right? Now watch this. Look at verse... Look at verse... Uh, look at verse uh, 13. John 16 and 13. How be it? When he... When he... When he... It didn't say when she. When he... Why? Because even though Israel is divorced from God, Israel is going to get remarried at the end, but Israel still needs to come under the order of submitting to a man in order to be saved. So that's why if you grieve the Holy Spirit, who's that man that you're supposed to be ministering to, you're supposed to be following his, his, his commands on behalf of Messiah, on behalf of the Father, if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit, you're going to be cut off. If you think you can skip around the Holy Ghost and just straight deal with Christ, sisters, even all of us, Israel, because we are, even the men of Israel, we represent the woman in her place with Christ. Catch that. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So guess what? John the Baptist said, I'm the friend of the bridegroom. I rejoice to hear his voice. What was John doing? John had the spirit of Elijah on him. What was the spirit of Elijah? To cause the, the hearts of the children to turn back to the father's. What does that really mean? That means you cannot be saved if you think you're going to break the chain of command and still get salvation. You can't get saved like that. If, if children dishonor their father and their mother, they're going to die. They're going to die. Do you think the Lord is playing? If a wife dishonors her husband, her head, she's going to die. If she thinks she can go around her husband, deal with Christ, deal with the Father, she is wrong. If a man thinks that he can skip around Christ, go straight to the Father, you are wrong. You're going to go to hell. So the Lord said, look, when the, when, the, when the spirit of truth has come, he, my friend, Jesus is a very wealthy man. I ain't going to say A, he's the wealthiest man, right? He gave us a parable in the book of Luke. He said, I'm going, I took a far journey. I'm on a business trip, baby, talking to us, talking to Israel, his wife. I'm going to take a business trip, right? I'll be back in, in a few days. In the meantime, my butler's in the house, right? My butler, the Holy Ghost. He, I, got, I wrote out a list that I want you to read over every day called this Bible. The Holy Ghost, as you, if you got questions, you can ask him. Ask the Holy Ghost. He'll, get, he'll, he'll tell you what I mean about what's written in, in my letter to you. As long as you obey my butler till I come back, then you'll be saved. If you don't listen to my butler, when I get back, you're going to be destroyed. I'm not, I'm not saving you. But some of y'all not understanding this. You don't, because you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. Look. Look at this. Skip down, same chapter, John 16. Skip down. 22. 22, right? And ye now, therefore, have sorrow. When Jesus was, this is right before he died and was resurrected, right? But since he's been gone on this long journey, Israel's been crying. We've been weeping, right? I'm talking about the remnant. All Israel haven't been crying. A lot of Israelites is having fun, partying it up, sinning. But the remnant, we've been crying, saying, Lord, come quickly. Now watch this. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. So what man is Israel ministering to 
like we read earlier, the, the women was, many women was ministering to Christ and the disciples all the way up till he gets on the cross. So what man are we ministering to until our husband comes back? We're ministering to the righteous man of God, the angel. Don't get caught up on how I said it. We minister to the angel. Why? Because we obey in the angel. The Lord said in Exodus, let me show you. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Watch this. Watch this, right? Exodus 23 and verse... Uh, here it is verse 20 watch this closely pay attention please pay attention to this watch this verse 20 behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which i have prepared watch this Beware of him and obey his voice provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him Oh my gosh, watch this. <laughs> Verse 22, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Watch this, watch, oh my gosh, watch this. Look, go to, go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter two, five, no, four. Uh, yeah, Ephesians 4. Now, let me see, where is that at? Here it is. 30. Ephesians 4 and 30. Watch this. Please watch this. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So what does this mean? L let me talk. Let me talk physical first. Then I'll come back to the spiritual. If a, if a woman, if an elder woman of Israel, she's divorced, she could be young. She could be a young sister, right? 20s, 30s, even 40s. Let's say she's divorced, right? Children, no children, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the children. She's divorced. What's she supposed to do? Now, I'm not talking about sinners. I'm not talking about those outside the camp. I'm talking about the, the righteous women of Israel. Let's say her husband was wicked. He just divorced her. She didn't do nothing wrong. She was righteous. He just divorced her, right? What she must immediately do is come to the church house, whether it's a local camp, a righteous camp, or whether it's a house fellowship, right? Where they where they serve the most high, where they do what the Lord say, right? She must get in that, she must fit in there and submit to the men of God in that place and start ministering to them. And as an aged, if she's an aged woman, what she's supposed to do is this. Let's go to Titus chapter two. This is what she's supposed to do if she's an aged woman. Okay. God got all bases covered, man. Y'all need to stop belly aching. You need to stop lying on this Bible and, and giving these sisters leeway to be independent harlots. You need to stop. You need to repent. Bring our sisters in order. Bring our brothers in order. We are God's people, man. We out here looking a hot damn mess. Because we want to be like the heathen. We want to sin in peace. I tell you the truth. The Lord our God have said he's going to uproot all evildoers out of this earth. And the meek shall inherit everlasting life. Titus 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise... That they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Do that mean they're supposed to teach you the Bible? Other, do they, they supposed to teach other sisters doctrines out of the Bible? No. They can teach each other scriptures concerning how they're supposed to be as women of God. But they can't be up there in a the man's office, in the bishop's office, teaching the word of God like they a pastor. But it's a lot of sisters around here that do that. And then they get mad at a brother like me for saying, you out of order, you need to repent. Not false accusers, not giving them much wine, teachers of good things. Teaching them what? That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, 
to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, how can they do that if they got an independent mindset and can't no nigga tell them nothing? No wonder the daughters of Zion, the younger sisters, no wonder they a hot mess. Because the aged women, they want to be cougars. They want to be milfs. They want them a young brother of Israel <laughs> to fornicate with. And so who's teaching the younger sisters how to be righteous, virtuous daughters of Israel? Nobody. Then we wonder why we, we get jacked up with these, these wicked women who can't stop running their mouth to us, who, per, who, who provoking you to anger to your face, putting their hands in your face, brothers, making you want to smack them. And then if you do that, they threaten you that they're going to call the, the, the police on you. But why are you provoking the brother? So you need to understand that this thing is tight knit. This is a sound doctrine. You keep giving me your feelings and emotions. I'm not listening to none of that. Let's talk book. Prove that a woman can be independent and get salvation. Prove it. You can't. So I showed you where the virgins of Israel are supposed to be at. They're supposed to be in their father's house. If the father not alive, the brother take over. If the brother not alive or he not in the picture, the uncle, a grandfather, a nephew, a son. Right? If, they, if none of them in the picture, no, no next to kin is in the family, I mean in the picture, for this, this widow woman or this divorced woman of Israel, then she must submit herself to the righteous men of God, ministering unto them. The same way, let me go back to the spirit, the same way Israel, we are a divorced woman today in 2020, awaiting the remarriage between us and our, our husband, Jesus Christ. Now, in the meantime, though, Jesus said, I want you to minister to my manservant, a.k.a. my butler, the Holy Ghost. I want you to listen to what he got to tell you because he going to speak on my behalf. And what are the pastors of Israel doing? We are speaking on Jesus's behalf to his bride. We are trying to tell you, submit yourself unto your God, Israel. Come into order. Come into order. Stop being out of order. God wants everything done decently and in order. But look how many rebellious men and women of Israel there are. Hate the truth. Let's go to. Let's go to Romans. Let's see what that is. Romans, Romans, uh, Romans seven, I think. Romans 7. Look at this. Is it Romans 7? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romans 7 and 1. Look at this. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Some of y'all cats on this live don't know the law. So I need you to be quiet. And I say that with much respect to you, my brothers. Some of y'all don't know the law. So be quiet and just listen. For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman... For the woman which hath an husband, she's not independent. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Do that mean that she can be an independent woman and Jesus becomes her head, her husband? And she going to get saved because Jesus, I'm married to Jesus now. I don't need no man. Wrong. How you know that Paul ain't saying that? Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is foundation. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. It didn't say her head is Christ. It didn't say her, her uh, head has to be a husband. It said the man in general. The man in general and the head of Christ is God. So Israel, we are not the head of Messiah. Man of God, you are not the head of Messiah. You don't get to tell Jesus what to do. Jesus tell you what to do. So it trickles down all the way through the chain of command. The man is not to be told by his wife what to do. No, sir, that's out of order. 
Just like the children don't tell their parents what to do. No, the parents supposed to tell the children what to do. The fa in the household, the father is like the father in heaven. The mother is like Christ. And the children is like the nations. You could really say Israel. If you humble yourself, the Lord will blow your mind. He told you in the book, I, if, look, if you humble yourself, I will, he said, I'll enlarge your heart so that you can be, behold wonderful things out of my law. If you humble yourself. So let's go further. Boy, oh boy. Let's go to. Uh, let me see. I want to go to Matthew 10. I'm almost done. Here it is. Matthew 10, 24. Look at this. The disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his Lord. So what does this mean? Do it mean brothers? If you got a wife, now I'm talking to you, to you brothers, that's, if, you, if you're righteous, I'm talking to you brothers if you're righteous, okay? If you, keep, if you keep the Lord's commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ and you love God with sincerity, I'm talking to you, okay? If you have a wife, your wife is your servant and you are Messiah's servant, but you are also your wife's servant. You know why? Because when Jesus came in the flesh, Jesus said, even though I'm your Lord, Israel, even though I'm your master, I'm your husband, I didn't come for you to minister to me. I came to minister to you because even though I'm greater than you, I want to minister more to you because the greatest will become the servant. So husbands, if you got a wife, serve your wife correctly. But understand the order. Don't let her usurp your authority as you're serving her. Because you still must give an account to the Most High on behalf of your wife. You don't believe it? Watch this. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3. So they sinned, right? The woman was in transgression. She sinned. Adam went with it. Watch this. Watch who had to give an account for his wife. Watch, please watch this. Genesis 3 and verse uh, uh, 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's Jesus Christ. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Eve. Does it say that? He called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree wherever I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman. He blamed the woman. Now, go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. I believe it's chapter 13. Hebrews. Chapter 13. I'm going to read verse 4. Okay, verse four, Hebrews 13, verse four, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So, so guess who those be typically? They be the daughters of Israel who were not taught the righteousness of the Lord, who grew up to be whores. I'm not saying that that's the end all be all for them because, hey, you can still repent, sister. If you humble yourself and, and be willing to, to serve the Lord correctly by coming into order. And the brothers, the brothers be whoremongers. Why? Because that's how we be raising our sons. Because we think it's cute and we think it's funny. Till they sleep with your wife. Now you got a problem with it. But they learn their wicked ways from you. So repent. Let's go further. Skip down. Skip down to verse 17. Obey them. This, now, now, I want you to understand this. Because this is not about a pastor, right? This is not about a pastor by itself. It is in a way, but it's not about a pastor by itself. The pastor must give account for the sheep that he taught, right? That he, was, that he ministered to. But I want you to understand this as it pertains to marriage. And not just marriage, but even a woman and a man of God, period. Just the whole thing. Watch, watch this. 17, obey them that have the rule over you. Now, men of God, men of Israel, who has the authority over us? 
Christ does. Well, ask yourself, who has the authority over the woman? Genesis 3 and 16 told you. 1 Corinthians 11, 3 told you. Who has authority over the woman? We do. So the woman is commanded, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. For you. My wife is not my servant. Yes, she is. Well, what if, what if, she, what if the daughter of Israel is not uh, married? Does she have to be married to be saved? The answer is no, she don't have to be married. But she still must come under the hedge of men. That's the way it goes. She must. Let's go back to Hebrews, I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians 7. I want to show you something. 1 Corinthians 7, I want to show you something. Look. Look at this, verse, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 7. For I would that all men, 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 not mankind, men, for I would that all men were even as I myself. Paul was a man, was he not? He wasn't a hybrid, huh? But every man, man, not mankind, every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore unto the unmarried brothers of Israel and widows, the widow men of Israel, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Why? Because a brother, a man of Israel, a man of God can be submitted to Christ and not have a wife and still be saved. A woman doesn't have that luxury. And it's really, it's, it, you shouldn't even look at it like a luxury, like, oh, this is better or that's, you shouldn't look at it like that. But the woman does not have that uh, available to her. The woman of Israel must either be in her father's house or next of kin. That man should be ministering and taking care of you. Be responsible, be accountable for your soul, or that sister needs to be submitted to the brothers in the, in the body of Christ and ministering to those brothers, just like the holy women in the Bible that you read about, like Mary Magdalene and them. See, when they came out of their sins and, and Jesus brought them into order, they didn't start running around talking about Jesus is my head, Jesus is my husband. They was ministering to Jesus through the disciples. Paul said, I wish that all y'all men was like me, all you brothers was like me, just being single, because a brother could do that. So either the daughter of Israel stay in your father's house, be a virgin, or your next of kin, the next male kin, or submit yourself to the righteous brothers in the, in, the, in the body of Christ. Even if you're not a virgin, become born again, keep the commandments, do what's right and acceptable before the eyes of the Lord. Verse nine, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. Talking to the brothers, talking to the brothers, to the brothers of Israel, pay attention. But if they cannot contain, if you men of Israel, if y'all can't contain yourselves, just being single and focusing on the Lord, let's get, just get married. For it is better to marry than to burn. And, and this is where, this is where the, the men of Israel have taught this wrong because they've given these sisters the impression that it's okay if you be single, you can still serve God and still be saved being single and not submitting yourself under the authority of man. These sisters is going to go to the lake of fire and these brothers going to receive the greater condemnation for brainwashing them with that mess and refusing to repent when they be corrected. Verse 10, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Because that goes into the other topic of can a woman divorce her husband? The answer is no. It don't matter what that man do. Now, if he whooping your ass, then get out of the house and go stay with your kinfolk. Be up under another man. Not to say that he replaces your husband, but you submit yourself to a nephew or a uncle or a father or a granddad or the brothers in the church house until your husband calmed down. But you still, you don't go out there and fornicate because your husband is tripping because the Lord did not give you sisters permission to divorce your husband. That's in the hands of the man. But that goes into another topic. So 
So far, I've done showed you plenty. I got way more scriptures, Brother Stephen. Way more scriptures. I ain't even scratched the surface for real. A virgin of Israel is supposed to be in her father's house. Before you chimed in on the video, I shared Numbers 30, okay? And showed you that the daughters of Israel, she can make a vow in her father's house and her father can say no, or he can allow it, or the Lord show you the flip side, she could be in her husband's house and make a vow and her husband can allow it or disallow it. Ain't no gray area of, well, she's single, she's living by herself, and she talking all this mess and God is listening to her. No, sir. No, sir. And let me read this for the sake of this conversation. Go to Proverbs 29. Go to Proverbs 29 and verse 8. Actually, 28 and 9, I'm sorry. Proverbs 28 and 9. Proverbs 28 and 9. It say, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So sisters, if you refuse to hearken to this, this sound doctrine, this truth, and you get to praying to Jesus, talking about you, an independent woman, and a Jesus is my husband, you get to praying to the Lord, the Lord say, I'm not listening to you because your prayer is funky as hell, and I'm not listening to it because you won't do what I say. You better take heed to what I'm telling you. If you care about your soul, you better listen to me. Because I'm telling you the words of the Lord. I ain't trying to get vain glory. This ain't about me. I'm trying to help Israel. I'm trying to help you, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, let me show you something else. <laughs> Let's go to John. I got way, I got so much scriptures, man. I ain't going to be able to get through all of this. It's so much scriptures, man, concerning this. And I'm baffled that these brothers will argue for the sake of these, these women, these rebellious, you going to defend her and she's rebellious? Well, you better think about this, man. Do you understand why Apostle Paul said work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Do you understand why God said in, in, out of the mouth of Solomon, uh, king of Israel, fear God and keep his commandments? Fear, you skip over that fear part. You say that real fast. Fear God and keep the commandments. Or you focus on the commandments. You need to fear God. You need to fear him because he's not playing. You know how many people is going to go to the lake of fire because they thought they was doing this thing right? And God kept sending them prophets of his and they kept not listening to the prophets. Do you understand many, many Hebrews going to go to the lake of fire? Many just out of pure pride and rebellion. Jesus going to come back. We're going to the, to the wilderness and Jesus going to bring us back into the covenant. It's going to take time. Ain't going to happen in one day. We're going to come back into the covenant slowly but surely. The Lord going to prove us like he proved our forefathers in the wilderness the first time. Many Hebrews not going to be down with what Jesus is talking about. And Jesus is going to say, like he said in Luke, bring them before me and kill them. You think it's a joke? I'm telling you, you better pay attention now. You better fear God now and stop playing. John 4 and 22. Now, some of y'all know this story, right? Jesus encountered this Israelite woman. Yes, she was an Israelite. She was not a Samaritan by nature. She was an Israelite, okay, from the northern tribes. Whole nother teaching. Anyway, she had five husbands, right? And the, one, the, the man she was submitted to now was not even her husband yet. So she's a fornicator, right? Now, Jesus gets straight to the point with her and tell her, look, you need this living water that I got. You need to understand my word because you, you are lost sheep. And I come to rescue you and bring you back into the fold now. I got to get your mind right. Now, I'm not going to take the place of your husband, but you're going to submit yourself to a man. You can't directly submit yourself to me because that's breaking the chain of command. Just like a man can't skip over Messiah and go straight to the father. You need to understand this, my people. A man cannot jump, skip over Christ and deal straight with the father. Christ is the high priest. What's the high priest for? To make intercession on behalf of man and God. So Jesus tell this woman, he said, look. Verse 22, ye worship, ye know not what. You think you serving God. I'm telling you, you're doing it wrong. You don't understand what you're doing, my sister. When you keep saying that Christ is your husband, you are out of order and you need to repent. He said, we, he said, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. 
See, a real Jew is one in the mind and not just in the flesh, in the circumcision. You a real Israelite. It's not about just being a Jew. It's about being a real Israelite. When you a real Israelite walking in the spirit, you understand the spirit of God's law. And your mind is completely circumcised. Let alone your flesh. You understand? Let's go to Deuteronomy 25. Let me show you something else. I ain't, I'm not going to go through all these scriptures I got. I'm going to have to do a lesson on the Sabbath. But I just want to give you a, a, a simple breakdown to, to cover all bases, Brother Stephen, to show you a woman that's not submitted to a man. I didn't say I never said she got to be married. I never said that she got to go into the streets uh, and, and submit herself to a gangbanger. I never said that. But she must come under the headship of a man. And I'm not talking about sinners in the world. I'm talking about those that's in the body of Christ. The sister, if she if she got kin, if she got male kinfolk that can take up the responsibility of her father, which is to provide her food, clothing and shelter. If she got male kinfolk that can take care of that for her until she, you know, and not until, but take care of that for her. Then she submit to those brothers. Right. While still dealing with the word. Because just because she submit herself to them, they may not be in the word, but she must come under their authority. Do you understand? And if she don't have no male kinfolk, then she got to find the righteous brothers in the body of Christ and submit herself to them and minister to them. Before I read Deuteronomy 25, a few verses, I want to show you, I want to, I want to remind you of something because the other nations, it's funny, we God's elect, right? It's funny because many of our people are without understanding. And that's not the worst part of it all. The worst part is they don't want understanding. That's why the Lord said we perish for lack of knowledge. And because we hated knowledge, he said, I'm, I'm going to reject you from being priest. That's why some of these brothers run around talking and don't know what they talking about. And these sisters run around talking about things and they have no clue what they talking about. God have rejected you until you humble yourself and repent. But the other nations, I'm going to just use one. The, the, the Japanese girls that come from these Japanese families, right? Israel, interracial marriage is a sin. I said what I said according to the Bible. Interracial marriage is a sin, but I'm not trying to get into that. What I'm telling you is these Japanese women, right? Because the reason I say that because I don't want you to be tempted into, oh, yeah, the Japanese. Yeah. Look, these Japanese women, right? You notice how when they're raised in their households with their father and their mother, they, they are taught to minister unto the men and their family. They taught that. By their mothers. Now, how in the hell? Listen to me. How in the hell do these do these heathen know the ways of the Lord without ever having read the book? And we got the book and don't even get it. These Japanese girls and these these uh, these heathen women, they I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying maybe like, you know, back in the day, maybe not now, but back in the day, they was raised to be honorable, virtuous women. Don't mean that we should be mixing with them in marriage. But what I'm saying is they was raised to be virtuous women, according to their customs. They mothers and fathers taught them to minister unto the men and don't be without a, a man's uh, hedge. You ain't you rarely back in the day. I'm talking about back back in the day. You ain't you rarely caught these women from the heathen nations being independent and proud and boasting and. Rarely. Now, how are they heathen and understand that? And you are God's chosen people and don't even realize this. You make an excuse. You trying to justify evil and saying that your sisters don't have to follow the order of God. I tell you the truth. You better repent or you're going to be destroyed, man. I'm telling you. Deuteronomy 25. Watch this. Watch this. Deuteronomy 25. And look at verse five. This is the real reason behind Boaz marrying Ruth, okay? This is the real reason. It wasn't because Boaz was horny for some stranger vagina. It's because he was fulfilling the law of love. Because he was raising up seed to his dead kinsmen. It wasn't because he lusted after the strange woman. You brothers need to stop with that. Deuteronomy 25 and verse 5. If brethren dwell together, we're talking about Israel, and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. That lets you know interracial marriage is a no-no. But anyway, 
her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife, to wife, to wife, not a baby mama, a wife. Why? Because she, the, the Lord is protecting her. There you go. His brother, his brother, his dead, the, your, your dead husband, his brother take up responsibility. Raise his dead brother up seed and then y'all can have children after that too. But at least you got a hedge. So you ain't just out there free roaming and Satan just calling you up anytime you want, destroying your brain. It said the brother will go into her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. But y'all talking about, but what about Ruth and Boaz? You don't even understand the whole story, man. You don't understand why it even happened and why God allowed for that to happen that way. You don't even get it. Because you're quick to speak and slow to listen. I mean, because you're not quick to, to, I mean, you're quick to speak and you're not, you're not uh, uh, quick to listen. You need to stop, man. Let's, let's look at some more stuff about a widow, about the widows. How, do, how are you supposed to take care of the widows? Look at Acts chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going to give a few more and then I'm out of your hair. Acts chapter 6 and verse 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians, talking about the northern tribe Israelites, against the Hebrews, talking about Judah, because their widows, the, the northern tribe Israelites' widows, were neglected in the daily ministration. You know, like Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 5, if any provide not for his own, especially they of his own house, he's, he's worse than an infidel, right? He's denied the faith. So if you got an aunt that's a widow, Right. Don't matter if she in the word or not, because she need a hedge. She need a man's hedge over her to protect her to be in order with God. Right. Because who knows? Maybe at, at a certain time, maybe she'll repent when she see this man, her, her family member walking in the word. Maybe she'll humble herself and repent one day being under your headship. Right. Anyway, if you got an auntie, she a widow and you and she needing help. Right. With anything and you don't be there for her the lord said you you supposed to be a believer right you supposed to be a disciple of jesus the lord said you worse than an infidel you denied the faith because you ain't taking care of your responsibility so that's what happened right here that's why they appointed these seven brothers including stephen to take care of the widow women of israel pay attention every turn you look at the one god want the woman the women of israel to be protected every turn you look at Every turn you look at, man, if they a virgin, be in your father's house. If you want to get married, your father got to give you, he got to give you off. If you don't want to be married, stay in your father's house, be a virgin. And once your father passes, find another kinsfolk, another male kinfolk that you can submit yourself to and minister to. I'm talking to the sisters. What if you already harlotted? harlotted harlotted yourself out that's not a word but i made it up what if you harlotted yourself out in the streets already okay repent repent come into the, the the truth deal with the word of god start reading start studying understanding do what the book say get around some righteous brothers minister to them it, as long as you working out your own salvation with fear and trembling my sister one of them righteous brothers if they be righteous one of them going to pursue your hand in marriage they're going to ask your hand in marriage but don't don't be a whore coming to the word, understand a few scriptures and act like you've been holy your whole life. Humble yourself, completely humble yourself. Jesus said if we fall on him, that we'll be broken. But God loves that because God said that he's near to the broken hearted. God said he's what he's fond of is a broken, uh, 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 um, a broken and a contrite spirit. But Jesus said, if, if the rock fall on you, you're going to be ground to powder. In other words, you're going to die. So you keep on with your wicked mindset, my sister. I'm telling you, you're going to die. You're going to go to the lake of fire. And brothers, if you're pushing this, you need to repent. So that's with the virgin. Then I'm talking about what if she's not a virgin? Well, repent. Get around some righteous brothers. Submit yourself. Minister. What if she's divorced? I showed you some scriptures. If she's divorced, get around some righteous brothers. Minister. If you got if you got a male kinfolk that can take up responsibility over your life, submit, minister. If you a widow, same thing. 
This thing is, is it's a closed deal, man. Sound doctrine. You can't, def you can't refute this, not because I made it up, but because it's the truth of our God. And if you're arguing against this, that's because you're rebellious and you need to repent. And if it's not because you're rebellious, then be quiet and study it out and stop acting like you know what you're talking about when you don't. And I'm not saying that to you, Brother Stephen. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about Israelites in general. Because people, when they see something they disagree with, not based on the truth that they understand from the Bible, but because their feelings is, is getting in the way, they tend to open their mouth wide and say how much they disagree with that. Instead of being doing what the Lord said, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So anyway, I'm not, like I said, I got way, way more scriptures than that. But I ain't going to be able to read all that tonight. So if the Lord will, whenever the Lord put it on my heart, I'll do a Sabbath lesson on it. And break the whole thing down. Touching on the virgins. Touching on if she's not a virgin. Touching on the widow. and or, uh, Touching on divorced. And touching on the widow to show you how all of those examples, the Lord got her submitted unto a man. Always in the Bible, you won't find one example of an independent sister getting salvation in the Bible. Not one. And when I say independent, I'm talking about she she felt like she didn't need no man because Christ was her was her head. You ain't going to find no example of that in the Bible where God accepts this. None. Even the wicked woman Jezebel, even she had a husband. That's saying a lot. But I would say to you, Brother Steve, and any of the other true sheep that tuned in, grace, peace, and mercy be upon you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen.